In a blow to rebel and militia leaders who recruit and force children to become soldiers during times of conflict, the International Criminal Court has found Congolese warlord Thomas Lubanga guilty on Wednesday of sending children into battle in the court's first ever verdict. The three-judge panel says that evidence proved beyond reasonable doubt Lubanga and his co-perpetrators knowingly conscripted children younger than age 15 to fight for the armed wing of his group, the Union of Congolese Patriots, during the Democratic Republic of Congo's civil war in 2002 and 2003. The panel says that children were forced into camps where they endured harsh training regimes and often brutally punished. The judges also say that commanders under Lubanga's authority used girls as domestic workers and subjected them to sexual assault. The court's chief prosecutor Luis Moreno Ocampo expressed hope Lubanga's case will help bring to justice Joseph Konyi, the leader of the Ugandan militia Lord's Resistance Army, who is still at large. The first individual, the first top leader of the militia indicted was Joseph Kony. He committed killings, but also he abducted massively children to use them as soldiers, as sex slaves, to force them to kill their parents. Kony is still at large. The second case was Thomas Lubanga. Lubanga will remain in custody until his sentencing at a later hearing. He could face up to life in prison. He has 30 days to appeal the verdict. Amnesty International says it was disappointed the ICC did not pursue allegations of other crimes committed under Lubanga, including rape. Now for more perspective on the ICC conviction of Joseph Lubanga, we're joined in the studio by Jacques Bahati, a policy analyst with the Africa Faith and Justice Network and a native of, of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Welcome, Mr. Bahati. Thank you for having me. Now as a person from uh, Congo DRC, first, what do you make of this conviction? Um, I welcome the conviction because the victims have been waiting for way too long and this is indeed good news. Yes. Now, we even have heard uh, Luis Ocampo mentioning somebody like Connie of Uganda as having recruited children also. But the reality is, across the DRC, there are many more people who have been uh, leading militia groups recruiting children. Is that, is that the case? Some are even in the government? Yes, indeed. Um, the complexity of the Congolese uh, situation is, is, um, uh, is big. And uh, there are many more. Uh, people who need to be brought to justice in connection to the similar crimes that um, uh, Lubanga is accused of, and even more. And in this case, we cite um, rapes and um, uh, mass killing and so on. Yes. Now, uh, some have uh, said, well, people like Lubanga yes. um, have been supported, have been bankrolled by other leaders in the region, some who may even be holding uh, the leadership positions of their own countries. Indeed, we must, first of all, put in context uh, the Lubanga case. Uh, Lubanga is just a middleman paying for his part in the, criminal, uh, in the, in the crimes. Mm -hmm. But we know that Uganda recruited him and uh, Rwanda was also involved. And you, you will be surprised that many people in this country, the United States, might be also connected to the resources that Lubanga was defending, the gold. Mm -hmm. And um, so the list of the criminals is very long. And um, uh, Bosco Ntaganda is also uh, one of those wanted in the same uh, uh, criminal case. Yes. So for those in Congo, uh, may there be some sense of sympathy for Lubanga uh, because of the fact that there are so many others who should be at the ICC, but they're not there? Yes, indeed. This conviction is, uh, a, uh, a, is bad news for those who committed similar crimes. So uh, somebody like Bosco Ntaganda is, should be uh, watching out because he is next. So um, even across Africa, this is a signal that indeed justice is coming and uh, you can do whatever you want, but time for you is just nearing. And we know that in Congo right now, we're talking about uh, uh, thousands of women who have been raped, who are being raped every day. In some cases, they say up to 40 women are raped every day. Uh, what really, from what you hear, uh, do they consider justice for them, for all the things that have been done to them, the, the, the killings, the rapes, and all the other uh, horrible things? Indeed, there is nothing that can restore uh, uh, these people uh, for what uh, they experienced. However, uh, stability in their community could do much. So ensuring that 
uh, the country is stable and people can rebuild their lives and have hope for their next generations, mm -hmm. that would do much. Mm -hmm. I was in Congo lately, um, three weeks ago. I was in Fiji and um, uh, more women were raped like, uh, as, uh, like a week ago mm -hmm. after I left. Mm -hmm. So uh, the crimes continues on and it needs to stop. All right. Thank you very much for filling us in also on the real situation right now in Congo, the latest. We hope to have you here maybe some other time. Thank you very much for inviting yeah, me. about those issues. So, uh, Mr. Bahati, uh, Jack Bahati is a policy analyst uh, with the Africa Faith and Justice Network. I want to thank him very much for joining us here uh, today on In Focus.